everyone. Um, I'm Steve. I've been doing WNCD stuff for far, far too long. Um, I'll reiterate, as I always do whenever I run this thing, this is not one place for me to talk and tell you everything. I'm going to start this off, and then I really want you, everybody here who's got an opinion or wants to ask questions, please dive in. Otherwise, it will be a very, very short session, and I'll feel like we've wasted everybody's time. So, quick agenda. Um, I want a quick one on to the current status. Plans for the existing sets of images we have. Talking about some, maybe some more image types. Um, any other random stuff we want to talk about. Somebody please take notes in Gobby because again this is a session I want to get notes from. So I took the notes afterwards and send out um, the sort of mails to the various lists. Um, I tend to think that's very important so the people who aren't here are also up to date. And it's a good reminder so I don't forget by tomorrow exactly what we spoke about. So, current state. We have a massive number of CD, DVD, Blu-ray and dual layer Blu-ray images created using Debian CD. These are published on cdimage.debian.org. That includes, and we try not to talk about it too much, some non-free images. We have some non-free uh, netinsts and we also have some non-free bundles of firmware. So there are uh, tarballs and zip files and literally as of about an hour ago also some CPIO images as well. CPIO? It's in the lockup format. Um, we also have some live images created using live, the live build tools and again we have non-free variants of those including firmware um, again for users who have hardware that needs it. We also have some OpenStack images that are created using the OpenStack provider tools. I don't see Thomas here, but he and I worked through this, and for Jesse was the first release where we ever had, um, I suppose, a cloud image included as part of our official release on our images server. I want to do more, I'll come to that in a moment. All of these builds happen on Peterson, which is a nice big server. Um, <coughs> it's been mine to play with for the last few years. It's awesome. Hosted by the nice folks at the University of Bavaria in Sweden, who are also the primary distribution site for all Debian CD images. Um, they have gigabits of bandwidth and want us to use it. We like them. <laughs> so, first announcement. Some people may be aware of this already. Um, we will not be making CDs in the future. Yeah. Apart from NetInst. Um, literally, I've pushed the changes for that for this this week. Um, nobody uses CDs to a first approximation, and people. Listen. We've had this discussion multiple times in the past about when we're going to just stop doing them, and I've decided today is or this week is the right time. If anybody wants to argue with that, feel free. <laughs> sure. So, by CDs, you mean ones that fit on the CD? Correct. Yes. We are going, going so to continue standard making. Uh, Life standard one must be the raw CD size. Yeah. That one's yes, that one is sure. We're not going to be making installer CDs anymore, apart from the net insts. For live images, we're going to continue create, creating all of the current um, image variants that we have. <coughs> I'm still going to carry on making DVDs and Blu-ray images for those architecture groups useful. Um, the DVDs are still configured so that DVD number one will fit on a 4 gig USB stick. Um, I'm open to more requests for more different sizes of image. Obviously, as long as it makes sense, the more image types we add, the slower the build goes. And people obviously can be bothered by that. So, as an example, we did the Stretch DI Alpha 2 release last week um, for DI and Debian CD. We, that made 927 separate images called, C called CDs. Um, for, on AMD64, that, that meant we created, if you just downloaded the full CD set and wanted to wait all of them, you would need 88 blank CDs to do it. No one is ever going to do that, so we, we stopped doing it. Um, we will continue to support 
for CD sets for <coughs> existing stable and old stable releases. We're not going to change those. Um, unless somebody you know, really, really feels it's a, it's a total waste of space, I don't want to go back and basically and change what we've already done. So, the other change, people may have seen, I asked about this um, on mailing lists a few days ago. The changes are in, I've picked. Again, I'm willing to be overruled. I think get.devin.org is a much better name than cdimage.devin.org. <coughs> Um, again, fairly obviously, um, if we're not making CDs anymore, that's a really stupid name for server. <laughs> um, we're going to keep the old name too. You know, again, I, I get, people do get paranoid with good reason. For the sake of a, of a DNSC name, we're not going to make the old thing break. So people who have existing URLs and all of the links and everything will continue to work forever, as far as I'm concerned. However, we're going to start publishing the new URLs uh, pointing here. One side effect of that is at the moment, if anybody is interested, go and, go and have a look at get.debian.org right now. You will find that it first straight away takes you to a page telling you about Debian CDs. <laughs> um, help with a new, new landing page would be awesome. Um, we've been meaning to, we'll be talking about, and I've been struggling to find time, so please help. We've been meaning to change and get a much better front page that's more friendly to users basically forever. Uh, help is always appreciated. We are still continuing to make non-free images. Um, this is not non-free in terms of including non-free um, normal applications, but for those people who weren't in the firmware talk we had the other day, we explained it a bit there. They are images explicitly that contain non-free firmware. Um, so for those people who have uh, CD servers, whatever, no, no, net laptops or servers, whatever, sorry, that need non-free firmware to be able to do basic things because of hardware support, we do provide images for those people. They have been unofficial because, of course, this you know we're Debian people. We don't like to advertise the fact that we have we're producing non-free stuff. The Free Software Foundation really don't like us doing it. But for those people who really need it, um, they're actually struggling to find them and that's not useful. Um, from the firmware buff, we came up with a number of different points on how to just make really small changes that add up to improve the user experience around these. Um, I hope, again, there'll be mails coming around and we'll be discussing exactly how we're going to do, do these things. Expect to see that the non-free images will be better linked. They will be better advertised, along with text explaining how they're bad and why you don't want them. But we will make sure that people can find them who do need them. So, new image types. I absolutely want to help. If you have a type of image that we're not currently making, um, tell, tell us. If it's one that you think would be better off working with a wider audience, and you don't necessarily want to go through, you don't have a server with good net access or all, that, all these kinds of things, we are happy to, to produce more and more images on our central official server. Um, it has the old server we're about to replace, the new one will be much faster. We actually have plenty of capacity to do more of these. Um, as I said, we have an, an, an official signed cloud image to go in OpenStack. Um, People have already spoken to me this week about um, the stuff of the Google Cloud and the Microsoft Cloud. Amazon people, I'm, I'm told, are also very interested. I have no idea how to use any of these. I'm not a user of any of these cloud services. But if we can help you produce images on official Debian infrastructure that are signed with an official Debian key, um, we want to help so long as it makes sense. Well, we have to first figure out how to do it outside of the infrastructure provided by those guys. That That's the biggest oh, problem. Absolutely, of course, that too. Um, <coughs> please talk to me. If, we, if, if you can give me a script or give me a process that we can follow, that we can run it on our own infrastructure, so therefore it's totally trusted, controlled by Debian, we will, we're in. Um, yes? Uh, I work for ProfitBricks and uh, we are a cloud provider too, and um, I create uh, Debian and other images um, for our cloud, but um, 
yeah, maybe it would make sense to uh, create the images directly on Debian. Mm. It would be even better if we if we would support cloud in it, so that we can just use uh, one cloud image uh, that, you, that Debian creates and don't need the one or two changes that we need for our platform. Awesome. Yes. Tell me how to do it, and we'll do it. Okay. Not right now, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we can work this out. Um, we have like um, different variants of live images. Um, Ian Learmonth, one of the Debian hands guys, um, is, called, is doing pestering me for the last few weeks on how to get uh, a live image for Debian hands Lots of these people... Uh, can you redirect him to us? Oh, package sure. Uh, he has stuff basically working. I've, I've told him to talk to you as well. Um, he's coming to my barbecue next weekend and we were, we're going to be testing things and make sure it's all working. Uh, <coughs> if there are any more, talk to me, talk to Daniel, and we can get loads more variants created. Again, so long as they make sense, if, if you want to create a live image variant that's just for you, we might tell you to go away and make it just for you. If, it is, if it's sensible that, you know, dozens, hundreds, hopefully millions of other users will find it useful too, hell, we can do it for you. We are wanting to get some live images working for non-X86 as well. At the moment, we've only had i386, AMD64. A lot of the architectures make no sense to have live images for because, frankly, trying to boot something live is hard, or they don't have sufficient memory, or, or you know, removal media, whatever. Um, there are things to, to be worked on here. Neil and I, well, mainly Neil, will I've been watching and encouraging. He's been tracking on a lot of the MD Bootstrap support for making more just more variants of images, including things with UEFI support and everything in the last week. Um, there's a whole slew of lot of activity going on here. Um, talk to us if you're interested. What else would people do people want to do? Does anybody have any burning requirements or suggestions or <coughs> things they'd like to see? Um, we have we built our own um, image for doing a net net boot live system where we just uh, create a uh, um, directory with the bootstrap and put some config in it, install some packages and so on, and then uh, do a net boot where we just have uh, the kernel and a custom init RD to load the tarball, extract it, uh, and uh, in a tempfs directory and boot into this tempfs directory. There's okay. something that Debian provides that has similar functionality that we could use instead of our custom build script. Um, and I don't know of anybody else doing exactly that. Um, this is creating a small um, it, well, kernel in, in a RAMFS that then grabs a tarball to extract into a tempfs. That's not too far off you, you, of what you're doing with Lava every day, is it? That's exactly what Lava does every day. Well, fine. So um, there are plenty of people doing it. We are doing that too, so it's not documented, so you can do it. <laughs> fine. Um, yes, I think. Um, we have, and again, this came out in Riku's talk about the different bootable image types we, we're producing. We currently have the 10, 11 different image generator tools in Debian which are, and a whole slew of others outside of Debian that target Debian, and it's scary. Of course, the key th the cool thing is that we, I think, I think the reason why we have so many image generators is because it's not actually that hard a job to do, to do the basics. So everybody starts off saying, oh, I'll just do the basic bits. And then they keep on adding more and more features the way they want to see them. And that's how we end up with all of this work. It would be nice possibly to share at least ideas and possibly code more. Um, we should totally talk about this on mailing list. And more discussion. Um, I should say, if you want to know anything more about this, um, if you want to dive in, the Debian CD list is around, we have the Debian CD IRC channel. It's fairly quiet most of the time. You may just find discussion between me and Kebby, or you'll see uh, Git commits turning up. Um, Anything else people want to know? Anything else people want to help with? Oh, more help is always good. Yes? Is it possible to have a CD for um, several architectures and if you insert into ARM64 
Marcin, it told and when you insert a uh, mix, yeah, you also put. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's all that is <coughs> Yes, we already have one existing multi arch CD where we have used the word multi arch and it doesn't mean the same thing as for packaging. Um, where the system will boot either on AMD64 or i386 and it has all of the packages, package sets for both if you were to do an installation with. Subset, subset Mac. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we also, we used to have the HP Special as Warlock described it, so we had HPPA, i 64 and Alpha all on the same CD or DVD, so you could boot those. Uh, there is plenty of scope for booting lots of different architectures with one provisor. Um, if the, the way different architectures boot in different ways, and sometimes they clash, um, typically the way the older proprietary Unix systems booted was you had to create a specially for, special sector zero on your CD or on your hard disk, which contained the pointers to where various th other things, the kernel, the init manifest lived. So long as your the different architectures you wanted to support didn't clash in terms of what they wanted and which, whichever offset in the boot sector, it was all fine. So that was why those that, that combination worked. If, however, you wanted to make, say, an M68K and a Spark boot the same CD, you just could not. They both wanted the same offsets for their own metadata. So you suggested, what, ARM64 and MIPS? Um, that should be quite easy to do. ARM64 boots off CD using UEFI and El Torito, <coughs> so that should work quite readily with the MIPS stuff. Actually, MIPS or MIPSL? Yeah, anything. Okay, oh, no, <laughs> as an example, yeah, yes. Um, it all comes down to whether or not the two can coexist on the, on the, with the same boot mechanisms on the same disk. Um, there is information about, around describing how to do this. Uh, if you can't find it, chat. Um, the question then comes down to how useful they are, uh, of course. We explicitly have the AMD64 i386 multi arch CD because that way we can have one disk, one net entity you can give to anyone, almost anyone, and it'll work on their laptop, it'll work on their server, job done. Uh, we're actually, um, I don't see, you know, Odex, uh, DDA has been working on um, fixing what we used to have auto detect with Syslinux so it would pick up <coughs> a 32-bit or 64-bit um, Intel chip at boot and then that broke. He's actually been hacking it back in recently. Uh, the changes have gone in this week, modulo bug fixing it, we should have that working again soon. So you will, so the NetInst that is linked from the front page of www.devian.org will, should then boot and do the right thing automatically on whatever PC you plug it into. So, fingers crossed that will work again soon. So does that mean you're going to add ARM64 into that late into the future? At the point when <coughs> ARM64 gets a sufficient proportion of users, then I could be easily persuaded. There's no point doing it until people have, there are actually sufficient people with, with hardware. <coughs> yes. Uh, so at the moment I'm creating uh, some kind of cloud image for a platform which is called Vagrant. I'm doing this inside the uh, Debian cloud infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But of course in the long term I would be very happy if I could work with you to do awesome. this. I've seen this has been done for OpenStack. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it works, but sure. it's there. I'm, I'm told it works. The images are, that we're producing Apart, nobody's told me they're not working, so it might be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that would be really nice would be to have um, at least some simple tests that we can run on those images straight after boot, straight after build, to check that they're at least vaguely useful. We can't test everything without a massive test mm -hmm. infrastructure, but at least <coughs> the testing will be good. But yes, absolutely. If you if you have uh, something to go for, yeah, a different cloud image type, mm -hmm. in a way. Um, again, talk to me and we can get it working. Okay, and how does work, for instance, uh, bug reporting for the OpenStack image? Do people <coughs> want to notify something about the uh, image? Um, at the moment, I honestly couldn't say. Okay. <laughs> um, well, actually, I think it comes to the Debian Cloud mailing list. It, it the should do, that's the best okay. place for it. Okay. Um, Thank you for reminding me, actually, if we put it in the notes. At the moment, there is a pseudo package in both BTS for cdimage.debian.org, 
we, you know, we clearly need to add another one for guest.devin.org. And at that point, we can then redirect all of those bug reports to the right people, depending on which image it's about. Mm -hmm. So, Steve, I will be interested what set of tests images are going through before they are published. Because if we are going to create kind of, you know, unified cloud image, mm -hmm. we have to test it somehow. Exactly. At the moment, the tests are um, whatever that the image generation tool will do. All right. Those are really, really minimal at the moment to a certain extent. I mean, they might even be, you know, so minimal that, that, that there, there are no tests. I don't honestly know what the test image does, what the test what the build tool does. We will, or I do some simple um, sanity checking before release on the size of an image, make sure, you know, make sure it's that it doesn't look too small and haven't blown up too big. I check to see if it looks like it's going to boot at least for some people. That's about as far as I've gone so far. And then on release day, we try and run as many right, not, uh, you know, images through yeah. as, as much of a matrix of different configurations. So of course that works, for, that works that works for yeah. live yeah. and installed images. For the cloud images, yeah. we haven't got that far yet. But I actually asked the question, I'm sure going to unify something, and there yes. was a discussion on legal as well, what we can call Debian. Sure. We have to specified set of tests which yes. everything will be passing. Sure. Um, please talk to us if you've got ideas on how to do it. Um, yeah. We want to know. Yeah, started doing this. So. Yeah, definitely. So for cloud images, you usually have cloud image on them. So you should be able to boot them, give some network and SSH into them, yeah. which would be a fairly good first test. It's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah. 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 But it's a good test for actually if image is working or not, not necessarily if it's comply with you know Debian guidelines. Sure. sure, but then you have a running system which you can <coughs> check against whatever you guys are yeah. defining. Yeah. So what what came out of that talk in terms of guidelines for Debian images? I mean, if we're making them to a certain extent they're official, I mean, what should what, what should we be doing? Well, the problem is there was no explicit conclusion <laughs> on that. <laughs> right. Okay. I think when guideline and somebody says sometimes that the software which is used to produce uh, image should be in main. So I think it, oh, it's obvious. Yeah, the, yeah. the conclusion was that, for example, Amazon wants to have Debian images on Azure, and they want we have to approve it as a Debian. They want to run their own tests on it as well. Yeah. But the conclusion was they have to publish those tests, and they, those tests have to be available for everybody to run yeah. them. So that that's additional, yeah, additional <laughs> point which you know have to yeah. consider. So. For the installer images, um, we have a test suite that in fact was written by Tincho Martin Ferrari years ago when he did a GSOC student, a GSOC project for Debian. I'll admit, to my eternal shame, we've never fully integrated it into the CD building setup. It's been on my to-do list for so long. Um, I want to get that in to check the installer images. Daniel, do you have any tests that are useful for live images in the same way? In the same situation, <laughs> um, yeah. there was a guy called Brandon, and he did an initial implementation of crazy VNC server stuff. Yeah. And plus some stuff. Okay. So who is speaking Go here? Go. Go. Who hates it? <laughs> That's not the solution, because there is a kind of nice Go software called Packer. Yes. Which I mean, you mentioned earlier, and the Debian derivatives uh, involved. And you can automate various um, virtualizations, so QEMO, VirtualBox, OpenStack, Amazon, whatsoever, and automate the gra graphical click through to some point. So you need to be able to write code and not to use it? No, no. Okay, so then somebody then has fine. to package it. Okay. So c currently, I download a zip file from the page of, of the author and just <coughs> and some untrusted machine and run it there, which is not going to fly in there. Yeah. Do we have a volunteer to help package and maintain this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where's Paul Tech? Yeah, I'm interested, but uh, it's, um, because I'm also a user of Packer to create this image, yeah. this yeah. way it's not yet sure. official, right? of course, yeah. yeah. but I uh, want to be test yeah. around. So we talk if we want to get to a point where we have a huge, you know, much wider set of images to stretch, obviously we want to make sure we get them tested. Um, we need to get the, get some discussion going and actually get this done. <coughs> so I said definitely volunteers needed. I'm not going to be able to do all of this for you. So, so back to the multi arch. 
topic. We have a, a custom install where we want to always install 64 bit, but we yeah. need to have a multi arch enabled system that can run 32 bit apps at the end. Yeah. Currently, the only way to do that is both full 32 bit and 64 bit stuff on the installer. Yeah. Any, anybody else? about this thing being uh, twice as It's big something as people have asked about several times over the years, but, nobody uses but nobody, <laughs> nobody's yet provided code. Um, so yeah, so when I first added the support in Debian CPU <coughs> making Sorry. a multi-arch image, it was explicitly, you would have as, as many arches as you want, but they would all be complete, yeah. up to the same level of completeness. Um, the difficulty will be in terms of how do you define what is needed for each of the, each of the architectures. Um, if you put, can come up with a way of, auto, of an, an, in an automated fashion, working out what's needed. Well, you have to do that anyway. Great. Sure, That's absolutely. Fun, so, so we can easier. just take in, for example, you know, this is all. This is Debian CD itself. It can take in just a set a, uh, a package list. You could shortcut the for the point that generates a package list, or you could explicitly just have for any architectures you just want almost as a stub. Say if you want AMD64, or you want i386 available with some libraries, you could just install um, the base system and uh, add a few libraries to that, um, and then just pass it straight through. Um, shortcutting bit, those bits of Debian CD probably needs code changes, but it should be fairly obvious. Um, please file the wish list bug, and I'll see what I can do to help. Anybody else? I guess everybody's happy. So please come and help. This is, you know, the plate of choir I do every dev conf. Um, Especially around, around what well, we're now about to massively widen what we're going to be doing. We are going to need help with making that work. There's a usual cry as well, especially when we come up to release time. Um, we're always looking for more people to help test what we're producing so we can make sure that we find it before end users do and they get confused because it's not just working. <coughs> um, so there's all, please keep an eye out for the call for help when it goes out for that as dive in if you can, especially if you've got the less common architectures. So, thank you very much. And I will say, sorry, I should have mentioned why I have a candle on and everything. Um, EFI stuff, you might have noticed I, we started a new Debian EFI team a few weeks ago. Um, I'll reiterate basically what I've said on the mailing list, which is if, you're try if you have a machine that, that boots EFI and does not just work with Debian and the installer, please let us know. Um, sorry? Well, it's, it's coming, I'll come to that in a second. But if you've got the camera on, it might not be a bad plan. Um, for EFI stuff, we want to get problem reports. If it doesn't just work flawlessly, please let us know and tell us as much as you can about your hardware so that we can then actually track what's happening. There is a cross distro effort, and this is this part of that work. So all of the distros now are sharing information about particular brands and particular models of hardware. So to be honest, we can start telling the manufacturers, instead of assuming it's our bug, if everybody's seeing the same thing, we can tell the manufacturers they're doing it wrong. Some of them might even listen, we'll see. Um, and the second part of that is secure boot. We had a plan of action this time last year on how to do secure boot. It got delayed, I won't go into all the, into all the grotty details why. It is still happening, I'm hoping we'll be announcing Initial secure boot support in Debian soon, hopefully by the end of the year. Cool. Is it going to be available for KTBSD as well? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, are you running KTBSD? I try a few times. Right. <laughs> and I I, just I, get I, actually, no, that's a very good question. No, no joking. Um, the KTBSD folks are, have been asking for help to get a Jesse, an unofficial Jesse release out with CD images and everything, I'm happy to do that. All of the stuff for UEFI we have so far is Linux only because yeah. that's what we've, we've done. 
I have no idea if UEFI even works at all in K3BSD. It must do. I assume it's it not working. No. Oh, I, I hoped it would. Um, <laughs> um, if anybody can tell us how to do it for K3BSD, I'll happily put, you know, plug the support into Debian CD and we can plug it into all the other tools that do it. If, but it's just somebody needs to know. I, I don't run K3BSD. I'll be honest, I don't particularly care that much for it myself to go and do the work, but I'm happy to accept patches. So, right, and that's, now, now you can all go. So. Okay. So see you on the secure boot front when you say yes. support. What does that mean exactly? It's going to work properly. We are going to, like right. you can boot or it'll actually do the verification of the whole. Yes, all of it. Firmware through kernel. Um, Kernel modules, validation. That, that is the stuff. plan. Um, similar to what the Fedora guys have, we, we are planning on having all of it. So we, we will have a shim package that's signed, we'll have a signed grub, signed kernel, and in an appropriate mode, it will it will be user selectable, I think is the current plan, but this is still subject to, to debate. You will be able to say, and this will only boot a, a signed kernel and use signed modules. Whose key is going to be used to sign it? Sorry? Whose key is going to be used to sign the elements of UEFI? Um, we, will have, we will have our own key. This is part of the work that's being done is we need a DSA to set up infrastructure attached to FTP master that will be used for producing some, some signed packages. Um, that's, that key will be, will be dealt with entirely by trusted people only and will be offline, all, all of that good stuff that I'm not going to bore you with. We will have a shim package uploaded to the archive that will then be submitted to Microsoft for the usual, uh, for, for the signature process that is necessary on x86 hardware. We are also very much interested in doing the same for uh, secure boot on ARM64 and any other UEFI platform that people ask for. Um, I know from the ARM world, a lot, hey, I work for ARM, a, a lot of the, the server vendors are very interested in secure boot versus two. Once we, we cascade down, I don't know exactly where the, where the tail stops, you probably know more about it than I do. Um, we definitely will have functional UEFI secure boot in the installer, kernel, and bootloaders and stuff. That's priority one. Can derivatives of Debian somehow hook into this whole process? I don't know. Probably. It's something that is going to have to be talked about. Um, I don't know the exact details. I don't, I'm not sure if I want to. I'm hoping it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's, it's a hard problem. Yeah. Um, you know, how far does the trust chain extend? Um, I know there are potential problems with the way the, the, way the Ubuntu guys do it with their... Oh, I have heard people complain about it, I don't know if personally if it's a problem or not. The Ubuntu Grub, for example, will will happily load a, a non-signed kernel, but it call, calls EFI uh, Exit Boot Services first. I'm not sure whether or not that's going to be sustainable for them in the long term. I've heard people say it's not, but uh, also I've not heard of anyone for, you know, actually saying, oh my god, Microsoft have revoked our key. Will the ARM images be signed by Microsoft? Or have the shim will be signed? That, uh, that's a very good question. No one as yet has come up with um, a central um, CA for ARM64 uh, secure boot. Um, it is very much under, under discussion, and even if I did know more, I probably couldn't tell you. Hey, I work for all my overhear things, but there are some things I should I, I know that I can't tell you, there are some things I don't know, so I definitely can't tell you. <laughs> so <coughs> and now I think we are finished, I hope. Any 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 last questions? Yay, let's go.